without wasting any time we will start the operating systems which is the second half of your chapter that is inside in the program so now the second half of this chapter is going to be about good morning, operating good morning now already we have seen a little bit about operating systems what are operating systems they are special type of system software which help in managing your computer i hope everybody can see the screen yes ma'am yes ma'am so first of all we see that we have to deal with the bare hardware of the computer you already know what is the hardware which is it is a it actually consists of all the physical parts or tangible components of your computer and you can see their list over here these are just a few among them okay there, there are many more a lot more different types of hardware devices which are available so hardware cannot work unless and until you uh, use a software along with it okay you use a software something to drive the hardware and i was already i have given you a short introduction about this in the previous chapter right so what is the software as we all know it is a collection of programs software is a collection of many small related programs will help which help us to perform some specific operation so where there are a lot many different types of software which are available in the market to name a few we have word processing software okay. we have a uh, spreadsheet software Based applications. We have uh, other things like uh, desktop publishing software, speech processing software, and there are many more. The list is endless. There are a huge number of different types of software which are available in the market, which we use for doing different type of activities. Right. So software are numerous in number now these all are application software we specifically need first of all a system software known as an operating system and its short form we will be referring to its short form as os okay there are uh, just for the sake of saving time i'm going to use these short abbreviations many a time okay so we need the main thing that is the os software can be broadly categorized as system software application software and utility software let's see a classification we have three types system utility and application software system software is divided into three types operating system language translators or we also say language processors and device drivers application software are of two types general purpose and custom software now language translators are again divided into three types compiler assembler and interpreter what is a system software i already had explained that system software is like a driver okay which drives the engine which is completely responsible for being the interface between the bare hardware and the person who is operating who wants to use the right so it coordinates computer operations control controlling and utilizing the computer hardware running application programs which is most important that is providing a support providing a platform for running all the application programs because all application programs need the help of the system software of the os to carry out tasks like saving programs accessing or retrieving uh, files from the hard disk so many such operations are there which need the help of the which need the support of the operating system 
control the operation of a computer system, direct the computer what to do, when to do, how to do. Can be further categorized into operating system, language translators, and device writer. These are few of the many different services and functions of a system software which has been given to you in a nutshell. Right. So all the difficult tasks, all the physical level tasks or tasks which are closer to the hardware. Please remember tasks closer to the hardware. All these tasks they are handled by any type of system software. Right. So all if you need to run a hardware, if you need to make a hardware device work, then you need a system software for doing that. Among system software, the most important is the operating system because it is a set of programs that control and supervise the hardware of a computer first and foremost. Second is provide services to application software, programmers and users. It provides a base, a platform to the application software so that programmers and users can work on them easily, manages all hardware and software input and output, processing activities within the computer system, flow of information to and from the processor, which data to be sent to the processor and all these things, the CPU generating logical address, okay, the CPU generating the address, uh, sending the read or uh, write line, all those things, read or write signal, which data has to be sent to the RAM, which data has to be uh, accessed from the RAM or read from the RAM and everything, all the work is coordinated by the operating It also, the most important thing, sets priorities for handling different tasks. Now, because normally we work in a multitasking or multi-programming, Windows is basically based on multitasking. How can we say that? You suppose you are typing a letter, okay, and along with typing a letter, alongside typing a letter, you are listening to music, right? Not only that, maybe you are working on some serious project, and along with that, you are watching a movie also, okay? You are watching a movie and you are uh, you can even play a movie and a song side by side, although it would be very difficult for us to figure out the sounds, okay, because it normally happens. If you have started listening to music and somebody starts uh, playing music at a very high volume, then you find it difficult to concentrate on any, any one particular song. But that is your problem. System will play both the things, song also and movie also together. So, one system, your system at a single point of time, it handles so many different tasks. Like, like right now, I'm typing as well as I am, uh, my webcam is on. Okay, so I am uh, conversing with you all through an online meeting software known as Microsoft Teams. Then I have a whiteboard application open. I have PowerPoint presentation open. So, multiple tasks are being handled by my computer. So operating system decides the priority for handling different tasks. Which task has to be performed first? Let us see some screenshots. This is a disk, a screenshot of a disk operating system that is DOS. DOS was a type of operating system which was available before Windows. Okay, uh, like ours is a generation. I have when I was in school, at that time we had such DOS based where they were monochrome computers, that is computers which could only show black and white and some shades of grey, that is uh, monochrome computers. And uh, we used to have like a uh, suitable floppy disk. Nowadays floppy disks are completely obsolete. Okay, floppy disks are small disks or very uh, like they are basically placed in a very flexible jacket and they are also magnetic disk only but quite flexible and this floppy disk fits into a floppy disk drive which is usually there on a desktop computer but nowadays you will not find them 
will not find those drives anywhere because floppy disks have become history okay they have become a thing to be kept in the museum just like you have your magnetic tape drives and other things which are kept in the museum now because computers or technology is one thing where everything becomes obsolete very soon so a few years ago floppies were very uh, floppy disk drives were very uh, popular but as our need for storing more information increased floppy disk they became obsolete because they could store more than at most 3 mb of data okay a standard 3 and a half inch floppy uh, floppy disk could only hold 1.44 mb of data because in those days mostly people used to work with text textual work was more and the effect of graphics was less we didn't have smartphones we didn't even have cell phones at those time and computers were very very expensive only a few families used to own computers and students were mostly dependent on their computer labs for doing their practice so we used to go to the computer lab and there we used to see a huge uh, desktop now desktop was like there was uh, we didn't have a tower type uh, cpu the vertical cpu which you see these days we used to have a flat horizontal cpu and that cpu was kept on the table and on top of that cpu the monitor was kept okay so this was the type of computer we used to see it was a bulky monitor having a crt screen and we had a keyboard and no mouse okay i first got introduced to a colored computer fully multimedia based window based computer when i was in class 9 so you can imagine what was the situation some time ago okay this was the case in 1990 okay people were not very familiar with computers and they were not that popular as they are today but it was like they their popularity was just in the growing through right uh and most work was textual and text doesn't occupy a lot of data so our work was easily done with a floppy disk but nowadays your requirements for data storage it has ballooned okay like anything there is so much of data which we have which we need to store that's why data storage capacities have soared up to several terabytes also right that is why a floppy disk is not sufficient for storing We mostly these days rely on pen drives and external hard drives. So DOS, you can see this was a CUI that is Character User Based Operating System, Character User Interface Based Operating System. We normally refer to this as CUI, and there you need to memorize commands. and it could perform only one task at a time that is a single use single user single tasking operating system so in order to work on dos you had to remember commands like if you want to uh, i'm just giving an example students dos is not there in your course because this operating system itself is obsolete now, right so in order to create a direct a folder folder is normally referred to as directory in dos and unix okay and okay. unix is also an operating system which is uh, i mean created by a group a voluntary group of people a community known as the gnu community so they have unix is another type of an operating system but although it is character user based but it is a multi programming or multi user operating system right so a folder was known as directory so to create a folder we used to give this command md what mkdir that is make directory and name of your directory of your folder like for example if i create a folder name my docs so it will create a folder name my docs in the current location so like this you need to uh, 
remember commands for doing everything for creating a folder for calling for opening the folder we need to use the cd uh, that is called directory command so i used to i will have to type it like this cd my docs okay to create a file i need to use the type command so this way in order to perform any uh, trivial task also i had to re remember commands for even now you can see a little uh, a glimpse of dos just press window plus r button and type there cmd it opens the command prompt so this command prompt is what it is your a small shadow of dos how dos is to work in then this is a screenshot of unix and on unix also you a black color terminal like this and these are all folders and files which you can see over here and we also need uh, for unix also you need to remember commands for working on it so remembering commands was a bit confusing task very cumbersome task because you cannot work on that operating system until and unless you remember commands and that means you have to spend a few days learning those commands what about windows you hardly spend any time learning it for the first time you sit learn to move your mouse a bit and you are ready to go because all you have to do is just point and click everything is in front of you okay so just need to point kuch na kuch click karo hai kuch na kuch hoga kuch action hoga okay so all you have to remember is where to click and how to click that's it. you don't need to remember any commands for that then came linux now linux is what it is some say it is linux some say it is linux okay so linux is a gui version of unix the graphical user interface uh, graphical user interface that is gui based operating system and the successor of you that is linux right linux is a successor of you so linux is a gui based successor of unix because everything at the heart of it we have unix but then everything is replaced by a nice graphical user interface you can see there is a nice desktop and on the desktop you have a number of uh, icons which represent different things this is a computer another uh, i mean this language is either portuguese or uh, spanish okay so don't worry about that and this is the official mascot of linux okay and its name is tuck t u x you might have heard about tuck paint when you were very young yes, in uh, you know you have your teacher used to take you to the computer lab and you used to draw numerous things using tuck paint right so actually it has been taken from this its name is tuck and it is the official mascot of all linux based or oh, that is official mascot of linux right and all linux based uh, software they take up this uh, name that is tuck ux so you can see everything over here there are a lot many options and it the uh, interface is almost similar to that of your windows okay if you have worked in linux but still linux also nowadays many laptops are available where you can directly install ubuntu okay in many of the classes in our school in the classes when your teacher operates classes you might have seen a kind of a desktop interface which looks very different from windows that is the ubuntu linux interface linux has numerous distributions okay here what you are seeing is just one type of distribution of linux you have numerous distributions of linux actually distributions means linux is first of all an open source operating system it means it is available free for free of cost for download and download it free of cost and its source code is also available 
source code is available for free. So you can download it. Source code also means its actual program in which it has been created. Okay, that program is available for download. Same is not the case with Windows because Windows is a proprietary right, which is created by Microsoft Corporation and Microsoft Corporation solely holds the copyright for Windows. So you will only be able to use Windows, not make any changes in its internal programming because Microsoft will never reveal that. But for Linux, it's a different story. It's Source code is also available for various organizations. They download the source code, they modify it according to their own preferences, they customize it, and they re release it with a new name. They re release it, okay, with a new name. So, likewise, we have so many diff different brand names of Linux. Let me just give you a short insight into that. We have Red Hat Linux. We have Fedora Linux, we have Linux, we have This is just barely scratching the surface. There is a whole, I mean, thousands and thousands of uh, distributions of Linux are available. Right. So this is it. Then we have uh, Mandrake also, okay. and there are many more such uh, distributions of Linux which are available, right? That to name of. So this is one such, uh, and even it has two desktop, two different desktop environments. Like in Windows, we have only one type of desktop, but in Linux, you have two desktop environments. Like one is your A desktop environment, and another is Genome. Okay, so one is A desktop environment, one is Genome. So these are two different, two different desktop environments means the look and feel, the ambience is different. Okay, it's just like uh, you are looking for a duplex house. So you visit, you contact the property dealer and he takes you to a site and he shows you some catalog okay. and he shows you a sample, I mean the construction has already started so he takes you to an uh, empty, a vacant house and shows you. So there what you find is the uh, ground floor has two bedrooms or the ground floor has one hall, one bedroom and the I mean, the sec uh, first floor uh, has two bedrooms, right? But then uh, you you feel that okay, let me see, let me let me do a little bit of more market research, and then you go to another site, and there you find it a bit different. There are there is one big hall only, and uh, kitchen and your toilet on the ground floor. And on the second uh, and on the first floor, you find three bedrooms. So it is a bit different, but it's the same thing. That is, both are duplex houses only. That two of the same dimension. So this is what a bit, a small difference will be there in the look and feel of these two desktop environments, right? So this is Linux. Then you have Solaris. You can also see wherever you find this open world. Yes, Ahmad Jana, it's an open source operating. It's an open source software. It could be an open source software. It could be an open source operating system, an open source driver. Okay, so anything which has open, like open office. So open office means it is also open. Right. So open solar is, this is an operating system which is not very popular. So you might not have heard about this. Right. Still, uh, mostly we are uh, we have heard about windows we are familiar with windows and uh, apple mac okay that is the macintosh operating and the android and ios operating system on our mobile platform but about solaris operating system 
about OS2 operating system, we have hardly heard about them. iOS, everybody knows, so I'm not Android also. These are operating systems basically created for the mobile platform, where iOS is basically for all the Apple-based devices, that is Apple-based mobile phones, such as smartphones and your uh, Apple iPad. And Android is, of course, for rest of the smartphones. Need for an operating system. Now, why do we need an operating system? It provides a platform on top of which application programs can run, act as an interface between the computer and the user, all the repeated points. So I'm just skipping through this. Operates, controls, and executes various applications. Allows the computer to manage its own resources and these are and many. Now let's see something very important. How are files and folders stored in Windows operating system? And most other operating systems also like Linux. The multi-level directory structure of Windows is almost same as that of Unix and Linux. So let's see how it is done. First, you have the root. Okay. When I say root, it specifically refers to any of your available partition, like C drive. Okay. And mostly for window based systems, C drive is the root, and this is the place where all your, sorry, this is the place where your OS is in. You can have C drive also as the root, then you can have D drive as the root, D e drive as the root, F drive as the root. Okay, so as many partitions, these are all partitions. Partitions hard disk. Your hard disk is usually very uh, hefty, means it has a very high capacity. Some, uh, you can have a hard disk of one terabyte like I have a one TB hard disk, right? So you can think about just making partitions on that hard disk where each partition will hold up some amount of Maybe you can take up uh, one terabyte. It equals how much? 1024 gigabytes. That is 1024 GB. So you can just divide 1024 GB by 4. And whatever you get, you can just allocate that to each of the partitions, right? So we can have different partitions on your hard disk. So each partition will act as a root, like D drive could be a root, your E drive could be a root, F drive could be a root, right? Now under the root, what do we have? Now just take a look. Those with D in front of it, for dog. That is what your directory or folder. And wherever you find F, that is your file. So you can have a number of files and folders in the root. If I have to show you an example, let me open the explorer. So this is my explorer. I'm going to this PC. And here you can see I have four, I have three partitions on my hard disk. Each partition is of 109. One partition is of 194 GB, second one is of 389 GB, and then other is 372 GB. So it's not necessary that all the partitions will have the same uh, amount. You can fix any amount of storage space on your partition. So now I'm just going to click on D drive. We have clicked on D drive. So this is my root. Right. In the root, I have so many different folders and some files. Right. Please remember something that is files are the only entities which store data. Understood? Folders have size. If you just create a folder, it won't have Size. Like I'm going to new and I'm creating a folder here and I'm naming it as my folder. And if I right click on this, go to properties, what do you find here? D 
through by. So folder in itself doesn't have any storage. It doesn't occupy any storage space. Understood? What is it that occupies space? It is the file. So now that folder, this my folder, I'm going to place this file over here. It's a PDF file. So I'm just sending this file over here. Now I go back and check the size of the folder. Now you can see it is taking a 5.83 MB. That is the folder, folder size is determined by the total size of all its containing files and subfolders. Okay. If there are some folders in it, if there are files in it, और अगर इस फोल्डर के अंदर भी फाइल्स होंगे तो सबका जो टोटल साइज है वो ऐड करेंगे देन ओनली वी विल गेट द साइज ऑफ दिस अंडरस्टूड इट्स ओनली द फाइल्स व्हिच स्टोर डेटा व्हिच ऑक्युपाई स्पेस इन द सो यू कैन हैव फाइल्स एंड यू कैन हैव फोल्डर सो व्हाट अबाउट द फाइल्स हियर यू कैन सी दिस इज अ शॉर्टकट सो आई विल डिलीट द शॉर्टकट these three are files. These four are files. One is a media file. It's a, a video. One is an image file. One is a Python file. Okay. And this is a small database file. Although it's not a database file, it's a kind of a small uh, system support file, which is created. Right. If I click on any of the folders, now you can see there are folders also and multiple files. And folders even have subfolders and Subfolders can also have multiple folders inside them and their own files. So this continues. So you can see folders can have any number of files and folders under them. So this forms a multi-level directory structure of Windows operating. And now if you have to name, if you have to find out the location of or you want to locate F11, this is a file. So you have to track it, trace it back to the root. Like, firstly, which folder is this inside? F11 is in which folder? You can see it is within D8 folder. D8 folder is within which folder? D7. D7 is within D3. D3 is within root. So its complete uh, path is going to be like, firstly root, followed by your tree. Followed by D7, followed by D8, and within D8 you have the file which is named as F11. Dot something could be there. That is an extension. This after dot normally when you find these three letters, they are known as what extension of the file. Extension usually it's like docs docx file dot xlsx. Okay, that is Excel file. PPTX, a PPT PowerPoint file, right? JPEG, a JPEG file that is an image file. So, like this, we have various different extensions. Some can be three letters, some can be four letters, right? Extension normally refers to the type of application which will open the file. Means if it is a docx file, it is clear to you it is a Word document. If it is an Excel aspect file, it would be clear to you that it is an Excel spreadsheet, right? So looking at the extension of a file, you can easily figure out what type of file. And in order to figure out the complete path of the file, this is how you do it. And let us see the path of one file over here. Like I'm going to take up this art integrity, right? So I'm, I'll right click. Go to properties, I'll go to security, and here in object name, whatever is there, I'll copy that. Let us come back and paste it here. Paste it. And now you can see what it is. D, this is your, okay, within root you have one folder, then within that folder you have the second folder, that is Microsoft Teams online class material. And everything is uh, separated by a slash. You can see. Slash is the character which separates the folders from its consequent subfolders, right? And then this is the name of the file. This is your file. 
that is art integration dot dot folders will never have extensions files will have extensions and also they will occupy space in the memory understood so anything any particular files address is taken from its root राइट तो हमें ये समझ में आता है कि B is what it's the root within which we have a folder within which we have another subfolder and within that subfolder we have this so this is the directory structure of not only Windows but many commonly used app operating system clear to everyone the multi level directory structure of Windows yes 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 now very important although uh, don't leave the meeting students time we still have time so i'm going to continue the very very important thing this is where you have to be now a little bit more vigilant and alert why because this you have not studied before in any of the classes till now whatever you studied about the operating system most of the information you already knew because you had already studied right about windows you have been studying in almost all the classes in your computer book yes or no whether it is class 1 class 2 certain things like moving the mouse and how the mouse works and uh, the desktop the task bar all these things you have studied but now what we are going to study is the types of when i say types of os the first thing which comes in your mind is the brand windows Linux, Mac OS. Let me tell you, these are the brands of operating systems which are created by some companies. When you come to categorize operating system, how do you do? So let's see the type of operating systems which require different types of hardware to run upon, and each have their own set of features. Some are single program operating system that is which work on only a single program at a time some are multi program os time sharing operating system real time operating system multi processing operating system interactive operating system and so on. what is single program os this kind of an operating system is designed to manage the computer so that one user can effectively do the one thing at a time execute only one program or command at a time these systems are also categorized into two single user single program single user multi program single user single program an example of such an operating system is dos where only one user can work on the operating system on the computer okay it will be like one computer one user and one program at a time coming to single user single program operating system another example is palm os it's a leading nowadays it's not leading it is kind of obsolete now palm os is a leading operating system for mobile phones and wireless handheld computers like palm top computers or personal digital assistants known as pdas many executives and businessmen they normally use such pdas personal digital assistant which is held in their hand in their palms and it has a small stylus with which they can select various options on the screen so such type of a device or an operating system is capable of handling one program at a time and only handling one user right so that is also an example of single user single program os single program multi single user multi program os now an example of such a system is your windows here you see various versions of windows this is the logo which came in 1985 that is windows 1.0 then windows 3.1 in 1992 this was released then in 1995 windows 95 was released and this was the version which i was introduced when i was in class 9 if you believe that you better believe it right so this was the very first time i got introduced to 
using a mouse and my very first uh, application software was not word it was not even paint it was corel draw i started with corel draw okay so that was the very first uh, insight into a window based computer then you then we had windows 98 windows xp in 2001 Vista in 2006, which was a failure. 2009, Windows 7 was released. 2012, 8 was released. Then 10 was released, and now 11th is Windows 11 is also released. This is the 2021. So, in this kind of an operating system, you can perform one task. You can perform multiple tasks at a time, but it will only allow one user. and another example is mac os okay that is also an example of a single user multi program operating now multi programming operating what are multi programming operating so these programs these operating systems not only execute more than one programs at a time but they are also multi user where more than one user uses the common computer that is cpu and memory for executing their programs and mostly such computers are client server based computers right where you have one server and multiple clients attached to the server and each of the clients each of the clients are what terminal where a terminal has only one display unit that is a monitor and a keyboard and it may or may not have a mouse mouse is kind of optional if the and they are no, normally used in business settings where the company wants to save cost in purchasing multiple different computers with cpu that would cost a lot rather you purchase one uh, big server okay that is one cpu and multiple terminals that would cost less for a company or a business settlement right so we will be discussing in detail about multi program os in the next class because it will take a bit of time to for me to explain to you what is multi program so i hope you all understood today's class students yes 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 Yes, uh, yes, I understand you have doubts. So for doubts, please join at eleven because now immediately I have a class in ten. Okay, so at eleven a.m. join the class once again. I will clear all your doubts that time. Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I have a genuine doubt. Not not of this chapter. Okay. Uh, ma'am, I had bought my book, computer book, yesterday only, and I'm in that. Uh, it is latest edition, two thousand twenty-one, but it uh, doesn't have this chapter. You don't have and this chapter. Sumita Arora only. It is. Okay. Actually, ma'am, it is chapter number four. Chapter number four. Okay. Yes. Yes, it uh, it should be chapter number four, Kushi, because I have a two thousand eighteen nineteen book, and this. The topics here are there in your syllabus for this. Okay, the revised term wise syllabus it contains these topics. So, as they said, chapter number four, you can just open it and refer to it. I'll be ordering a latest book very soon in the school because right now I have an old edition. So I'll have to first personally see what all things are there in that chapter. So you can have a chapter name. Okay. Ma'am, in my book, chapter number four is emerging trends. Emerging trends. Okay. Yes. Is it the same with others, Jaya? Ma'am, in my book, it is insight into program execution. Yes, ma'am. Same. Yours. Uh, my uh, book. What is your edition, Apni? Ma'am, edition. Latest edition only, no? I yes. hope, Kushi, you have purchased the right book. Just uh, contact the other batchmates and just uh, figure out. Then you can, uh, if it is a very latest book, you can return it and get the correct one. I think you have got the wrong book. I also have this emerging trends chapter. Emerging trends. Now this is, this is quite uh, I mean, uh, confusing because I don't have a latest book. So if one of you send me a screenshot, if you take a serial wise screenshot of the contents page of your book and send me, then I'll personally look into it. Right. 
so one of you can just do that and take a screenshot uh, kushi what you can do is uh, you send me a screenshot and uh, agni or jaya can send me the screenshot of contents of their text so i, I mean, can compare also, so chapter number 4 is insight program execution some have this some have the other this is what happens with copycat so they change the chapter name and number all of a sudden so it could be some other chapter in your textbook kushi so just send me that and i will find out okay yes ma'am and even if you don't get that because it is there in your syllabus so it's imperative that you have to study so i will send you the uh, ebook which i have right so you can study that from there just take a print out of that chapter and you can study it from there right yes ma'am okay thank so, you ma'am okay bye if you have any doubts to 